What started out as a quest for a tasty tomato has evolved into a year-round obsession. The tomato man is a certified garden master who pays close attention to his happy and unhappy customers <laughs> to provide the best tomato harvest each and every year. Bob Zini joins us now with tips to enjoy hand-picked, homegrown, vine-ripe, and heirloom tomatoes. Ooh, Bob, thanks for being here. Such an honor to Thank have you, you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, Bob. So tell us, this all started where you were just kind of doing some for friends and you were yeah. growing them in your backyard, yeah. but then everybody's like, wait, we want more. Right. So right. it became a business. Well, um, I like to call it an enterprise. If I yeah. called it a business, I would have to take it seriously. Yeah. Right. I really, you probably I'm, don't I'm make a lot of money from to do it. That. Yeah. yeah, I'm reluctant <laughs> to do that. But it all started, but I mean, you see it all the time. You go to the grocery store, and there's just these tomatoes. And they're bright red in color, but they just don't taste. They don't taste like anything. Uh, the tomatoes you buy in the store could be off a vine from anywhere from two weeks to uh, a month. Right. And uh, the secret is getting a tomato that is right off the vine. Oh. And it is sweet, it is sugary, the flavor is complex and deep. Uh, you're not going to get that from those tasteless travesties in the supermarket. Tasteless yes. travesties. There are so many different varieties, too. Yes. How do we know what we're supposed to be picking um, or buying? Any heirloom plant that you grow um, is going to taste wonderful. I mean, mm. they, they come in all sizes. There's five to 10,000 different varieties um, from softball size down to pea size. Um, you, can, you can get any of them and any fresh tomato will taste better than what you buy in the store. And the incredible thing is, thank goodness you're doing the work of preserving these heirloom seeds and varieties because if you didn't do it, like who would be doing it? And it's very important for you to get the word out and to preserve these seeds too for future generations. There's people around the country that are doing the same thing I am. Uh, L.A., Denver, San Francisco, Cleveland, and all of them, one of their missions is to make sure people understand that heirloom tomatoes are uh, a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. So I'm sure people at home who are mm -hmm. growing their own tomatoes yeah. right now have one question. They're like, you have the expert. Ask him. It's so hot right now. What do what you are do? We, yeah, what do we do? Okay. Um, I recommend five things. Okay. Oh, jeez. Right. Get right. the pens. Right. Okay. 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 Number okay. one. All right. First, water every day, especially if you every have them day. in pots the way these are. Okay. And second, water every morning, which I know I'm repeating myself, <gasps> oh. but I can't emphasize So wait, are you saying enough. in the morning and at night no, then? No. Or well, just... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm confused. Um, extra watering? Extra water. Extra water. Gotcha. Extra water. Okay. Okay. So the, the third thing is make sure you have a lot of mulch in the plants. And that's okay. that's this stuff. Uh, oh. And I use straw. Okay. You know, two or three inches. And it's it's great because it's uh, cheap. Uh, you can buy it almost anywhere. Um, it's it's kind of messy, so it's really not made okay. for a TV studio. But uh, Wait, what does the it, straw do? Why is this important? Well, it uh, prevents evaporation. It's kind of like insulation, oh. right? Exactly. Oh. That's insulation exactly on what the ground. Got it. Yeah. Okay. It okay. Yeah. All right. Another thing you can do is put out a bowl of water to keep the urban vermin and other wildlife from going for the tomatoes. They'll go for the water, oh. and then the tomatoes Leave are the tomato left alone. alone. And um, finally, they can put some sort of uh, netting over okay. the plants, some sort of, you know, the kind of thing that they have yeah. in restaurant patios. Yes. Put that over there and it will cut down on the direct sun and heat that's that's hitting the plant. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this plant here. So you said this plant shows a couple of signs of what right now? There's there's some dead flowers. Okay. Oh, um, yes. And uh, that is from the extreme heat. When it's 65 to 85, right tomato plants love it. When yes. it's 75 to 95, uh -huh. that uh, 90 degree different, that 90 degree temperatures uh -huh. are going to kill the flowers. No flowers, no fruit. So this, these are the dead flowers here. Yeah. On this so side. So is this garbage then, or what do we oh, do? Oh no, no, no. Okay, because look. Voila. Yeah. Take a look at this. Okay. Okay. Look at this juicy baby, so everybody. Don't throw it away. Save it. Yeah. And this Water is what it. I love about heirlooms too. They always have these odd like shapes too. They oh, always yeah. kind of look like this. So cool. Yeah. All kinds of shapes. There's some that have the shape of a pumpkin. You okay. know, like mini pumpkins, which is really interesting. That is crazy. Okay, I was also told you're gonna show us to do something with a toothbrush that we're supposed to oh. be. Okay. Um, do our tomatoes have teeth, Bob? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? Um, tomato plants are self-pollinating. Okay. So you want to get the pollen off from one flower to the other. 
Now, what you can do is just shake it because okay. that will dislodge the uh, pollen. Or you can use a toothbrush. Listen, Bob, I love that you have spared no expense for your tomato plants, and you are using a state-of-the-art toothbrush <laughs> here for this. Your dentist would be proud. Right. I'll shake the flowers. Look, uh, tomatoes reward um, close attention. Yes, they do. I mean, they are, they are great therapy for anyone suffering from the heartbreak of OGD. Yes. Obsessive gardening disorder. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your wife doesn't mind that at all. Uh, <laughs> She's glad when I am outside the house in the garden rather than inside the house go, annoying Bob, her. Go, yes, Bob. Leave, what please. is the best way that you like to enjoy your tomatoes? What kind of dish? Do you just have them plain? Do you have them on a tomato sandwich? Do you do a caprese salad? How do you enjoy them? Yes. Okay. Never um, <laughs> All uh, of them in a face. Yeah, on a salad, of course, uh, bruschetta is just oh. its just the most wonderful thing with fresh tomato it. and basil, which we grow alongside the tomatoes. Oh. Sometimes yeah. I just like it on a piece of toast, like between oh, yeah. just bread with a little salt and pepper, a little mayo. Yeah. So good. Yeah. There you go. Delightful. And we love your your gardening hat, too. Well, thank you. Protection thank from you. the sun. Yeah. Don't it's forget to wear man. your sunscreen when you're out there gardening. Okay. And <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bob. For more tips and information, just head to chicagotomatoman.com or find him on Instagram. Are you trying to be the tomato woman? No. Adding I just, your I, own I tips just here? Think, I just think Bob is scrum <laughs> uh, scrumptious, and I just, I love tomatoes. I'm passionate about tomatoes, too, and it's just great I that he's, it. I will follow him. He is the Pied Piper. That's well, all. Bless. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you, Bob.